Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 2nd. First up, this was sent in by Navy Thomas 8. Thank you for this article. Um, this is about the new Zumwalt class of naval ships, the new stealth type of ships. I've reported on some of them before, but uh, this is cool because the Zumwalt ship has launched. It was not able to be christened because of the government shutdown, but it has actually launched and it is in service. It's one of those stealth ships that's going to be able to use some of the newest cutting-edge technology, and they think in the future they will be able to mount uh, some special weapons such as rail guns and lasers, so it has the capacity to be upgraded with an extra 1,500 tons of equipment or weapons to uh, meet with cutting-edge technology. And the thing for us geeks that really makes this super cool is guess who's going to be captaining the very first um, ship named USS Zumwalt of the Zumwalt class of ships. His name is James A. Kirk. So that's kind of cool. As those of us that are Star Trek fans know, the original Captain Kirk is James Tiberius Kirk, but this is kind of cool and uh, what a neat thing for us geeks that uh, the first cutting edge, uh, futuristic looking kind of ship is uh, captained by somebody of that name. So if you get a chance to check out this article, there's a about a minute and a half video too of the final completion some of the final completion steps of this ship where they mount the uh, top tower on the ship. It's speeded up so that you see it happening at way faster than real time, but it's kind of cool to see the ship coming together in some of its final stages. Uh, looks like just before they're getting ready to paint it and put it out to sea. So if you get a chance, check that out. Next up, this was sent in by, I think this was sent in by, let me look on my list here, 54, yeah, 1954 Shadow sent this one in. Uh, this is entitled, this is from ABC Australia. That's not ABC as in the network in the United States. This is Australian news. And uh, the title of the article is, Japan says space cannon to be fired at asteroid is on track after successful test. And for those of you that ride motorcycles, it's kind of cool because it's called Hayabusa 2. And that's one of the super bikes as far as horsepower. But um, yeah, this is the second craft that Japan's going to put up there. The first one was the Hayabusa 1 in 2010 that collected some comet dust. The thing about this craft is it's going to launch a projectile that's going to blast the surface of an asteroid and then collect the dust on the asteroid and the debris that hasn't been affected by cosmic rays and stuff like that, something a little bit more below the surface. Then it's actually going to land. It's going to collect the asteroid debris and bring it back to Earth. So that's planned on launched in 2014. They're actually going to launch it up and it will be done and bring the, if it's successful, it will be done and bring the debris back to Earth around uh, the year 2020. So hopefully that kind of uh, sample, asteroid sampling mission is going to be a success and uh, that might give us some cool new information on asteroids. As usual, all of these stories that I'm talking to you about, the links will be below in the description area, so please check them out. This is one for James Bond fans. Now, if you're into gadgets and, and geek stuff like I am, you're definitely probably a fan of, of the James Bond series. Well, in the movie The Spy Who Loved Me from the 70s, there was the Lotus car that turned into a submarine. Well, the owner of Tesla Motors has actually bought one of the um, Lotus models used for the, for the movie. Uh, there, there were several of them for different scenes of the movie, but the one he has bought, he is saying he's going to actually make it into a real functioning submarine. So that would be really cool. I mean, the price he paid for it was over $900,000, almost a million dollars he paid for this thing. And he said he's going to invest the money. Wouldn't that be the dream of all of us if we were to win a huge amount of money to take one of the spy gadgets from James Bond or maybe another one of our favorite movies or something like that and make it in from a prop into an actual functioning uh, kind of deal and I guess that's what he intends to do so I'm going to try to keep track of that and if I hear any updates on it I'm going to let you know about that because that would be so cool to have uh, a Lotus type of vehicle that's really a functioning submarine not just a, a movie special effect. And last up I love this when they give a chance for people to be citizen scientists and what better project than this because you could even get the kids involved and uh, a lot of you maybe for school are looking for science projects for your kids. This would be perfect. Get them involved in this. But it's not just limited to kids. It's adults too. It's called the Lost Ladybug Project. And it's lostladybug.org. Link will be below in the description. What they're trying to do is get an accounting of how many native species of ladybugs are left. Now there's another article I'm going to put along with it about the fact that right now in Tennessee they're experiencing a, a huge influx of ladybugs. We've had that happen here in the Chicago area too where in the, in the fall right about this time you might all of a sudden walk out and find that the whole side of your house is covered in ladybugs. 
and especially the last time it happened here it was with uh, Asian ladybugs. Well, they're also saying that there are some native species of ladybugs that haven't even been found for a long, long time or even been accounted for. I guess the last time we had any kind of amount of the nine-spotted ladybug, which is a native of the U.S. and North America, was in the 1950s. Um, there was one example in 2006 I read about of uh, someone in the New York state area actually finding one. But what they would really like people to do is get together and get an accounting of what types of ladybugs that you find in your area. Um, they even want a data point if for some reason you go out hunting in your yard or a certain area and you find no ladybugs, they even want to know that information too. All the way in the procedure to go about hunting for the ladybugs, how to identify them, and even how to photograph them. They would really appreciate anybody that can participate in the study and send a decent photograph of a ladybug. They would prefer you use something like a white or a gray background when you take the photograph and something to make it to scale would help too, such as a coin or something like that. But read these details. It's laid out in uh, a very simple way. Um, they even tell you how to make sweep nets to be able to do it that way. Um, if you feel so inclined, get your family, get the kids involved and do something like this. Uh, best time like they said to do it is not necessarily at the end of fall, but um, at the beginning part of summer is a really good time to do this. So something maybe to keep in mind and something... Uh, if I end, end up in my backyard being able to find some ladybugs or something like that, I'm going to fill out a, a form and, and bring it in and uh, send it in so that they can possibly identify. So anyway, that's it for this week, everybody. Take care. I will catch you next week.